Today we're going to be simplifying complex fractions. This is a continuation of section 9.5 in Algebra 2. This is piggybacking off of the lesson we did previously with adding and subtracting fractions. We just have more complicated looking fractions here. and We add in the element again of dividing fractions as an extra step. So what we have here is we have in this problem um, two fractions that are being subtracted and then later on we're dividing by another fraction. So the first thing we want to do in these kind of problems is cloud in the two fractions that would either be added or subtracted because this process requires us to find a common denominator and that's where we would start. On the um, x over 1 minus 5x over x plus 2 part of the problem we want to find a common denominator and that would be the product of 1 times x plus 2 which 1 times x plus 2 is just x plus 2 and so that's going to be our common denominator. Now in the first fraction we have to multiply by x plus 2 and when we distribute to the top we get x squared plus 2x. On the second fraction we already have a common denominator, nothing has to change about that second fraction, it's going to stay 5x. Now we're ready to go ahead and keep our common denominator and combine our like terms on the tops together. We have 2x and 5x, they are like terms and we're subtracting them. 2x subtract 5x would be 3x. So x squared plus, no, minus 3x over x plus 2 is the answer to the cloud portion of the problem. Now what we're doing is we're taking the cloud portion of the problem and we are dividing by the other fraction x minus 3 over 4. So x, mi x squared minus 3x over x plus 2 is being divided by x minus 3 over 4. When we divide fractions we copy down the first fraction, change division and multiplication, and flip the second fraction. So the 4 comes on top, the x minus 3 goes on bottom. Now we go back to the rules of multiplying and dividing fractions where we try to factor and then cancel any factors that are the same. On the top left corner where it says x squared minus 3x, we can factor out a greatest common factor, which here the greatest common factor would be x, and if I take that out in front, I'd have x plus, excuse me, x minus 3 left over inside. Now we're done factoring and we're looking for things that'll cancel. In the top left corner, I have x minus 3 and in the bottom right corner I have x minus 3. They're going to cancel and then this leaves me 4x on the top, x plus 2 on the bottom, and that's my final answer. 4x over x plus 2. Nothing more can be, can be simplified about this problem. On the second example I have two fractions that are being subtracted and then I have two fractions that are being added and then eventually I want to divide these answers. So I'm going to cloud the top of the problem and cloud the bottom of the problem and find a common denominator for each situation. On the top of the problem my common denominator would be the product of x times 1 which is 1x or x. Now the first fraction already has the denominator it's going to stay a 1 on the top. The second fraction has to multiply by x which is going to change that top to 2x and now I subtract 1 minus 2x is 1 minus 2x and it's over my common denominator x. This is the answer to the top cloud. On the bottom cloud I do the same kind of process. The product of 1 times x or x is my common denominator. The first fraction has to multiply by x changing that top into 2x. The second fraction already had the common denominator and stays a 1 on the top of it. I'm adding these fractions together, so 2x plus 1 equals 2x plus 1, and it's over the common denominator of x. This is the answer to the second cloud. Now I'm taking the first cloud's answer, and I'm dividing it by the second cloud's answer. When we divide fractions, we copy, change, flip. Copy the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. So x will be on top of the second fraction, 2x plus 1 will be on bottom of the second fraction. We do not have any factoring that has to be done at this point. We are ready to go ahead and look for any part that can cancel. We have an x in the top right corner and in the bottom left corner that can go ahead and cancel. They're not married to anything. And that's all that I can do with canceling. So my final answer is 1 minus 2x over 2x plus 1. I can't cancel the 1's on the top and bottom. They're married. I can't cancel the 2x's on the top and bottom. They're married. So this is as far as I can go. This is my final answer. On the last problem, we're going to go ahead and cloud the top of the problem where we're adding fractions together. 
and we want to find a common denominator which is the product of 1 and x minus 2. 1 times x minus 2 is x minus 2 for the common denominator. The first fraction has to multiply by x minus 2 and when I distribute on the top of that I get 3x minus 6. The second fraction already has the common denominator. It's going to stay 4 minus x. Nothing changes. And I'm ready to go ahead and keep that common denominator and combine like terms on the top. 3x plus negative x would be 2x. Negative 6 plus 4 would be negative 2. And so I have 2x minus 2 over x minus 2. This is the answer to the cloud. Now taking that answer to the cloud and I'm dividing it by the other fraction, 6 over x squared minus 4. When I divide with fractions, I copy the first fraction the same, change division and multiplication, and flip the second fraction so that the 6 is on the bottom of the second fraction, the x squared minus 4 is on the top of that second fraction. The rule of multiplying fractions is that I factor and then look for factors that will cancel. I have two places that I can factor, the top left and the top right. On the top left where it says 2x minus 2, I can take out a greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 2, and when I take that out, I'm left with x minus 1. On the top right, I can factor by the perfect squared method. x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2 by the perfect square method. Now I look for anything that will cancel. I have an x minus 2 in the top right corner, and in the bottom left corner, they'll cancel. Now there's actually one more thing that will cancel, but you might not see it yet, so we're going to go ahead and write this out and then I'll cancel that in just a minute. I have 2, x minus 1, and x plus 2 left on top. I have 6 left on bottom. Now the 2 on the beginning of the top and the 6 on the bottom are not married to anything. They can reduce. The 2 cancels out and the 6 reduces down to a 3. And so my final answer would be x minus 1 times x plus 2 on the top over 3. This is as far as I can go.